All right, in this unit we're going to install a, um, a door. So the first thing we have to do is step one, which is measure up the height and width of our door. So we measure the height. Measure, make sure you measure both sides. If it's a brand new door, it should be exactly the same. And the width. Make sure you measure them in at least top, bottom and middle to make sure that they're the same. Write those measurements down on the door and we'll move on to the next step of working out the door jam. Alright, the next step is you need to get your materials for your door jam. Um, it could come in one long length or it could already be cut roughly two length, depends on how you order it. Um, the two long lengths are, are called my jam styles, the sides of the jam and the shorter length is the jam head, so that's going to go over the top of the doors. We also have our door stops, you won't need them at this stage, but later on you will. We have our two door stops for the long side, and we have our shorter door stop for the head. Now, the first thing I need to cut is my head length for the jam of the head. Uh, we will work that out, and I'll show you how to mark that up and cut it. Alright, after we've measured our door, the first thing we need to cut is our head length. So the first thing we need to do, I'm going to zoom into it for you to see, is take the width of our door, we then width, we add our gap, which is our two and a half mil either side of the door that you've already been shown. Um, we add the jam, so two 18 mil jams, 36 in total, which gives us a total head length of 861. So we Cut that to length first, and I'll show you how to do the checkouts. All right, um, to work out the size of your styles, that's the sides of the jams, the long sides, you have to take the height of your door. So we take the height of our door, which in this case was two meters and 40, so I'll zoom in and show you that. So the height of our door is two meters and 40. We take that, we add whatever floor coverings we have, which is, in this case, I'm allowing 20 mil for carpet. We have a gap at the top of the door, which is 3 mil, and the check out, which is going to be 5 mil, which gives us a total for our size of 2 metres and 67. We cut our styles to length at that length, and then they're ready to join onto the head that we've already cut. Um, you need to know whether the door is an internal or external door. Obviously, if you're hanging a door outside, so it's, a, it's an external door, it needs to be weatherproof. MDF doors aren't weatherproof. Um, it will normally give you the information on the side where the green sticker is, and then that will also tell you where the lock lock is. Sometimes it's only one side, sometimes the lock lock will be both sides. Okay, once you've worked out the length of the head, you need to cut it, cut it to the length. So measure it, make sure you mark it really, really accurately. Um, your tolerance is a very small here, so you want to make sure everything you cut is, is right. After you've marked it to length, just put it up against your door and you should have about 40 odd mil longer than what the door is wide. Um, it's just a quick way of double checking to make sure you didn't mark it wrong. One of the things before you cut out your head and before you do the checkouts here, make sure you're doing your checkouts on the right side. All the door jams have a round edge on one side, one, one face. That round edge needs to go towards the door itself. So the round edge is the edge that you're going to be checking out for your door jam. So make sure you get it the right way. Okay, as you can see here, on this one here that I've got to show you, um, there's a checkout, so we check out five mil, and that's so the side of the jam can come in and then it gets screw fixed or nailed through the top edge there. So what I'll do is I'll show you how to do this five mil checkout on the head of the door jam. All right, at this, at this stage we're going to mark one side of our head for our door jam, our side door jam. So what I need is a piece of the door jam to mark how wide the actual checkout's going to be. And then I measure down five mil and mark around. So a five mil depth and the thickness of the jam, which is generally about 18 or 19 mil. Then what I have to do is set the drop saw. Now there's a, a little flick back 
adjustment here, I need to flick that back and that will stop the blade from going all the way down. Now what I have to do is adjust the wing nut until I get down to my depth, which is 5mm, and then I know that checkout will be the same depth all the way across. Now, this is not a router, so we're not going to take all the material off, we're just going to put three cuts through it and then we chisel it down to its size, but this will set the depth of the cuts for us. So I'll go ahead and cut that. We're only going to do one side to start with, then we'll measure from that checkout and mark the other side. Once we've done those cuts, we then chisel out the rest of it by hand. Be careful when you're doing those cuts that you keep the constant pressure on the drop saw, or else the depth will be different from one end to the other. So just when you're chiseling out, after you've done your cuts for your rebate on the side of the head, just get rid of the, the material, like that. Then we just need to smooth out the bottom. Don't go deeper than your cuts because that's the depth you've already set and that would change the whole length of each style. So we just want to get rid of just the bumps and that's it. And it ready then for the sides to sit in there. I've done that side, now I'm going to um, show you how we measure across. Now you know your door width, so your door width is let's say 820. So you measure it from this checkout across to the start of the other checkout. So if your door width is 820, you'll go 820 plus the two and a half on either side, total five mil. So I'm looking at 825. So you then mark that. Uh, square that across, go through the drop saw and cut it at the same size. But before you cut it, um, Sit it up on the door, allow your two and a half mil on this side, and then have a look at your mark on this side, and it should be two and a half off that side. That's just another way of double checking your measurement before you actually cut it, because once you've cut it, and you've made a mistake, you then have to replace with a new header. Um, so double check that first, and then go and cut your second check out. So once you've um, marked it, you then set it up to check the door. So I'll zoom in and show you, and you should have two and a half mil gap that side, and the two and a half mil gap to that line. I'll zoom in and show you. All right, now we've finished our head, we need to cut our two styles to length, which is the two sides. So we've worked that out previously, our door height plus three mil, plus 20 mil clearance for the um, carpet, if that's what it is, that can change depending on the job and then plus your checkout. So at this stage here, let's check that the checkout is five mil. If it's six mil, you have to add it another millimeter to the length. So check the depth of your checkouts and then cut the two styles to the, to the overall length. All right, at this stage I've cut everything so it's all ready to be put together. I put, just hold it together and I'm going to check all the sizes. So if I sit it over the top of the door, so the door's in the middle, and push the jam to hit one side of the door, I should have a five mil gap between the other jam. Um, if I push the door hard up against the head, I should have my, whatever my carpet or floor clearance was, plus my three mil gap should be at the bottom of the door. If they're all right, then you're ready to go ahead and put your jam together. All right. Um, now we're up to marking the holes for our head so we can screw it together. Anytime you're screwing MDF together, you need to make sure you pre-drill with the right size holes. Now we're going to use a 35mm screw, you go 35 or 40mm uh, hot through the head and into the styles. Now when you go into the styles, you also need to pre-drill with a small drill bit through the edge here or else you'll end up splitting that. So make sure that the drill you use through the head is wider than the screw and the drill that you use in here is narrower than the thread because the thread needs to bind it. If you drill too big a hole into there it won't pull together and if it's too small it will crack in half. So, so there's our checkout 
Now 18 mil check out, so what I'm going to do is measure in from the end 9 millimetres, which is half our 18. Draw a line across like that. Then measure in 30 mil from that edge. 30 mil from that edge. And, and drill out two 4 mil holes. And they should be in the centre of our checkout there. So now sit the head on to the jam like that and with your 2mm drill bit in the centre of the 4mm hole, drill two pilot holes. Like that. Um, make sure it's all nice and clear. You can see the pilot holes in there. Then we're going to screw them together with our 35mm 30 screws. And it should pull up nice and rigid like that. Making sure that it hasn't split across the top here. When you are fixing the head on, make sure that there's no gaps down between the, st the side and the top there. Um, it should be butted up nice and firm. At this stage we've got our jam all put together here. Um, again, let's just check all of our clearances. Have our three mil gap at the top. Check our clearance for our carpet at the bottom. Make sure we are the two and a half mil either side. Um, if all our clearances are right, then we're going to take our jam over to mark where our hinge positions are. Then we're going to take the hinge side of our jam off so we can check out our hinges on the bench so it's nice and easy. Sometimes you will have to check them out after the door's been installed, but for this purpose we're going to um, take that side off, hinge it on the bench, and then put it back in again. All right, I've brought my door jam over to where my door is going to be fitted. Um, I'm going to mark the hinge side. Now the door's going to open this way and come out towards where I'm standing. So I'm going to mark a H where the hinge side of the door is going to be. Just so when I get it back to my bench, I know which way, where I'm going to check the hinges out. Also be careful when you're moving the door jam like this, because it's not fixed anywhere at the bottom, it's very easy to rip the screws out at the top. So do hold it steady, get some help if you need to, to move the door jam around. All right, then we're gonna mark our hinges, the start of our hinge. We're going to measure down 200 from the top of the door head and we're going to measure up 200 from the bottom of our door. So just mark the edge there, and that's going to be to the bottom of the hinge, and at the other end is going to be to the top of the hinge. Okay, this is the bottom of my hinge. So I line the hinge up with the edge of the jam. And with a nice sharp pencil, mark around. Mark the bit of the hinging. And it's ready to chisel or router out. All right, now we're going to router out the hinges. So the first thing we need to do is set the depth. So we take a hinge, sit it on the base plate, and your trainer will demonstrate this for you. Set the depth and then you're ready to go. Once you've got your hinges marked and your router is set to go, you need to router out about two or three mil in from the, the line that your hinge is marked, and then um, we chisel out to that line, and then your hinge should fit perfectly. All right, so we'll router this out. So two hands on the tool.
Now that we've routed out the bulk of the material, we're going to go around with a nice sharp chisel and just clean it off to the lines. The depth is already set by the router being um, set to its depth, so it should be nice and easy. Careful not going over the lines, just go right to the edge of the lines. Alright, so you can see the line around there, so gently with the chisel, um, flat side to the line, flat side of the chisel to the line. Start with the both ends, like that, come along, again you're better to leave the line on and come back and touch it up than to get too much off at this stage. Once you've done the chiseling down, then it's just a matter of cleaning the surface off. All going well. The hinge should sit in there. That needs a bit more out. In the That sits in and it should sit in nice and flush with the surface as well. Right, now that we've checked out our two hinges, we can put our door jam together again. Now when you're putting your door jam together for the final time, of course, um, you would also put some glue in there, so glue and screw it. We're just going to screw it together because obviously we're going to pull it apart. Alright, now before we move the door jam over, um, what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece of timber across the bottom, about 150 up from the bottom, just to hold the jam together while we install it. So whatever your measurement for your opening is at the top, from inside of jam to inside of jam, come to the bottom, measure across the same measurement. Once you've got the same measurement, Pack a nail in there, then we're ready to lift the jam up and it won't move all over the place and go and stand it up in the door frame. Alright, now we have our door jam sitting in the frame, the first thing I need to do is check the head for level. So I'll put a level on top of the head here and if the side I'm hinging, now this is the side I'm hinging, if that is lower than the other side, you would have to then put a packer underneath the bottom to pack it up. The other side we don't have to level at the moment if, if this is lower. Um, this level shows that this side needs to come up, so before I fix that side off I'll pack that up a little bit. At the moment this one's right so I'm ready to, to pack it off. So the next thing I need to do is grab a long straight edge and a larger level and check for plumb. Now, reading that very quickly, the bottom I can fix in, hard up against the stud, and I'll need to put a packer out here. So I'll fix the bottom off. Um, when you're fixing the jam into this position, don't forget to put the folding ruler in here. It needs to sit 12mm off the stud, so um, for plasterboard or any lining. So if you're having a lining that's thicker than 10mm, um, you'll have to go thicker than that. So what I'm going to do is fix the bottom in place. Making sure I'm out my 12mm. And then I put my straight edge back on here. plumb it up and I can measure what size packer I need here. I'm measuring about 13mm there so you can either go get something that's 13mm thick or cut a block that's 13mm thick. Just making sure that it's sitting 12mm off the stud so I use the thickness of the folding ruler as you can see there. So 
I've cut myself a block here and sit it in, cut up against the stud, making sure we're at 12 mil. Making sure it's not touching in the middle. Check that for plumb, that's good. So now I know I can fix that point in there. Try and put the screw fit the screw through the um, packing or just above it or below it, just so it holds in position in the right position anyway. 12 now roll it in there. It's still sitting at 12 mil. And making sure it's nice and plumb, which it is. Okay, once we're up to doing the middle, just set the straight edge on, put your packet in, bring it down. Um, you may have to cut a packet to size. When it touches the straight edge and the top and bottom are still touching, that's where it needs to be. Um, if it has no hole in the jam already, you'll have to pre-drill a hole. Make sure you drill a like a four mil hole to the center of the jam. That's going to be covered by the stop. And then we put a screw in to fix that packer in as well. If you don't pre-drill, if you don't pre-drill into the jam, it will pull it away from the stud and it makes your hole leveling a lot harder. Alright, at this stage we're going to now level the head up again because I remember that. I need to pack one side. So I sit that up there. You can see it needs to go up a little bit. So I'll put a little bit of packing underneath that side there. Um, always double check yourself again and again. Yep, that looks pretty good. Turn the level around to make sure the level isn't out. That looks pretty good. So my next step is I can fit this one here. Now the top across here can't alter, so I know once I get my 12mm out, I need a packer in there. So I can measure that packer thickness, it's going to be about 8mm, and I'll get something about 8mm or a couple of packers to make that space up. Fix that top screw in, then we'll show you the next step after that. So I've got my packer at the top, it's 12mm away. that one on. I then have to do the same to the bottom. Set it out as 12 mil. Measure the width of my packer, thickness of my packer. 14 mil. And fit one in there. Alright, I've got my bottom packer fixed. It's sitting 12 mil off the, off the stud. I now need to stand back and check the line of the door. That means lining up the back edge of this side jam with the front edge of this side jam just to make sure that the door's not twisted or the jam's not twisted in any way because then the door won't sit flat. So I'll do that and come back and then fix the bottom off. All right, I'll fix the bottom off. I've now put my packing in the middle so it's nice and straight with the straight edge. And then just fix that screw in there. Double check that it's nice and straight. Um, at this stage, if there's any bows in and out, um, you may have to put further packer down the bottom or up the top. You want it nice and straight along that straight edge. Um, now that I've done that, I'm going to put the hinges on and um, I'll show you how to check out the hinges on the door. Alright, at this stage we're going to um, fit our hinges. So we've done our checkouts, we've installed our jam, so we just need to fit our hinges. Um, use some short 20mm um, screws. If you're using a tech screw, you won't have to pre-drill it. Um, but make sure that the hinge is sitting nicely and accurately in its checkout. Alright, at this stage now we've got our hinges on our jam. We need to stand our door up in its place and mark which is the knuckle side of the hinge. So which, this is the knuckle of the hinge. So which side is this going with the door swinging this way? So mark it in. You should have also marked top on your door when you did the measurements earlier on so you know which way it's up. So make sure you've got it the right way, just in case the measurement at the top is a little bit different than the measurement at the bottom. So once you've marked the end for knuckle side of the hinge, 
then we know where we're going to, to mark it on our door. Okay, so we're going to measure down to our first hinge. Now we know we have a 3mm gap above the top of our door to our jam, so what we use is a piece of masonite packet that's 3mm and we measure down straight to the top edge of that hinge. Be accurate with your measurements if you need to get up on a stool or something. Um, get up on a stool, so that is 188. Write it on the edge of the door if you like. 188, so you know what it is. Then to measure to our second hinge, we just hook a tape onto the first hinge and measure straight down to, to the second hinge. Get your measurement. Again, be very accurate. 1567. And write that measurement on the edge of the door. I'll show you how to set up the door in a door gym. That's going to hold it for us while we check out our hinges on the edge of our door. Alright, now we're up to hinging the edge of our door. You need to make yourself a door jig here, which is just a bit of framing pine with a wedge. One square cut, one angled cut. Um, your trainer will show you how to make one of them up if there's not one available. And we slide the door across, sit it in between the gap there, put our wedge in, give it a couple of taps with the hammer. That will then make our door nice and stable, ready to work on the top edge for our hinges. Alright, we're going to now mark our top hinge. So, on the, the door here, it's, it's the top of the door. I've got my end where my knuckle side of my hinge is. Now the knuckle is, remember this, head, this part here. So, first thing I need to do is measure down the distance that I've marked on my door. In my case, it's going to be 188. So I'll mark that on the edge of the door there. Once I've got that, I then can sit my hinge in place, lining up with the face of the door as you've been shown. Mark around like that. And so that's ready to check out with the router or with the chisel. I mark my depth in I need to check out as well. Now, at this stage you can measure down to your next hinge, which you've written the measurement down there, or you can do this one first and hook the tape on the edge. If you get someone to hold it, it's a lot easier and it'll be a lot more accurate. You can hold it on 100 here and measure down to the next hinge, but make sure you allow for that 100 mil. Okay, we've done our check out. What we can do at this time is actually put the hinge on and the reason why we want to put the hinge on is we can hook the tape on to measure our second hinge position. But also, when we actually get to screwing our door up onto the other hinges, the holes are already there, so you don't have to try and line up the screws. So it's a good point at this time just to be able to do that, and it makes the rest of the job a lot easier. So, okay, so now we've, we've fitted our first top hinge here. Um, I can hook the tape measure onto it and measure across to our second hinge. Again, I know the knuckle side because I've got that one there. You've written the measurement on the edge, so mine's 1567. 1567 is right there. Again, be very accurate with your marking because when it comes to putting it back up again, um, you want to make sure it's right. So I've marked that hinge. I can now take the other one off, bring it down here, mark it, check that out, and then we're ready to stand the door up. Okay, I just wanted to show you closely. Um, when you're lining your hinge up, make sure that the, the leaf of the hinge there, that cutout there lines up with the face of the door. Um, so that's where it should line up. Put it on your line that you've measured to, making sure that that gap and that gap is lined up with the face of the door. Then with a nice sharp pencil, mark around your hinge. It needs to be really sharp because you're marking the edge of the hinge and that's where we're going to check out there. So you can see where I've routed out. Now I just have to clean out to the edges, making sure 
that you're right on the line hold the chisel nice and straight and we're just cleaning up straight down on those lines be careful that you can still see the line on the back side of the chisel there when you're going along the door like this it's a lot it's a lot more brittle so hit it a little gentler and again all we're doing is cleaning up just need to clean it out be careful at the back here if you take off too much you'll end up slicing that back section off should sit in there nicely should line up with the edges and should be nice and flush across the surface when you're putting the screws in the hinge make sure that the screw is dead center of the hole or else what it will do it will pull the hinge to one side and you can see that screw has gone off sort of to the high side and what it will do when I keep continuing it down it will pull the hinge across and you'll have a gap so that one's no good um, as far as that goes so what we have to do is make sure if anything you come to the back of the hinge just a little bit so even that's That keeps it nice and snug in there. So there's no gap across the edge there. You can see how far that hole was. So I'll put another screw in there now, but I'll have to bring it in. In from the other one. And there you go. All right, now we're up to hanging our door on our hinges. Um, as you can see, I've got a block at the bottom of the door that's going to hold it up to height for me. You might need some help on this one. Open the door right up as much as you can, depending on where you're fitting your door. Have your hinges opened up. Now remember, I've already put some screw holes in there, so all I have to do is pull the door across, make sure it's sitting into the checkout. You know, you may have to adjust that up and down. Put some extra packers in there if you need to, to get the height right. Down, so that's now there and sitting in there beautifully. Don't worry about the bottom at this stage. All you need to worry about is the top. So tighten that up. There, be, be careful not to over tighten the screws. So we'll put a couple in the top there. And this is what, you know, if you've pre-drilled and pre-put those screw heads in once before, it makes it a lot easier. Then we're going to go down and do the bottom. If all your measurements are perfect, um, it should just line up beautifully. All right, at this stage now we've got our door hung. What we need to do is adjust the jam a little bit. So the gap down here and down there should be the same all the way around. The gap at the top should be an even three mil. Um, so what you'll have to do is just adjust your packing in and out a little bit, maybe remove a bit, maybe add a bit. All right, now we've got our door hung, we have to fit our stops. The first one we're going to fit is our head stop, so just sit it in there, make sure you're sitting on the edge there, mark the length. You want it snug enough that it's going to sit there, but not too tight that you're going to push the jam apart. When we actually fix the stop on, um, you want about a mil tolerance back from the door, so you're going to close the door, have the stop up in there, and you want a mil clearance from the edge of the stop back to the door, that's so when you put two coats of paint on your door, it's not going to bind. Alright, now that we've got our door stops cut to, to length, um, we want to mark where they're going to go on the jam. So what we need to do is get someone else to hold the door flushed with the outside of the jam, and then on the inside I want you to mark against the door a line so across the top, a few lines down each side as well, as the door's closed, of course. Then when you fit your stop, I want you to fit it a mil back from that line, and that will give us our tolerance for our paint. All right, when we're going to nail our stop up to the head, cut yourself some blocks that fit in there nicely, because if you're nailing up, you'll push the head of the door up, which is what we don't want to do. They don't need to be fixed, just sit in there, Sit the stop in, in there, make sure you're a mil off the line that you marked. Again, a mil off the other end of that line.
now we're ready to fit our side stops. When fitting our side stops, make sure that the door stop is hard up against the top stop and again, a millimetre away from our line. You'll find it a bit easier to um, nail it if you're putting your nails where your packing is, it just won't bounce as much. If you need a nail in between, you're going to have to put a piece of packing in just to stop it bouncing all over the place. Alright, we've fitted our door stops. Um, the door shuts against the stops nicely, everything's nice and even. We're now up to putting in our architraves around the door. Now the architrave's job is to finish between the plasterboard that will line the wall and um, the actual door jam itself. Now, Here's a piece of architrave, and what it's going to do, it's going to sit 3 mil off the inside face of the jam. So what we have to do is we put, have to put some marks around to line it up and to measure it. The most important points are our two top corners, so we need to mark them first. So what I do is I get a piece of masonite here like this, and I'm going to zoom in and show you you're marking the top edge. Alright, you can see the top corner of my door jam. What I want to do is put the piece of masonite so it's flush with the inside of the jam and I want to mark the top and that will give me a 3mm mark off and then I want to do exactly the same on the side like that and that's where my architrave is going to sit to, to create the corner um, I'll, do the, I'll do those marks further down as well so I've shown you how to mark the corner. We also want the same marks, the three mil marks, probably in about four places down the whole length of the jam. And as well on the other side and the other corner as well. And that's what we're going to line our architraves up with. All right, I'm up to cutting my first piece of architrave for the side of the door. First thing I want to do is measure down from the flooring up to my line. So this is this three mil line that we just put on. So two meters and 88, and that will be to the inside corner. So you can write that down on the door if you like, just so you can remember it down right on a piece of timber. We're going to cut our first one at a 45 degree angle going up from that measurement. After we've got that, I'll show you how to mark the top one. At this stage, before we fit our architraves, we want to put some 10 mil chipboard or something your trainer will give you, just in the corners just so the architraves will sit over the top of it because normally we'd have plaster on the wall before we fit our, our architraves so we're going to put some um, 10 mil board just to simulate for plasterboard make sure that's fitted before you start fitting your architraves when you're using the drop saw to cut your architraves at a 45 degree angle um, make sure the front one's loose, you pull down the lever and you can move it in 45 degrees. Make sure it locks itself in at 45 degrees and it is on the 45 degrees. It does have a little bit of movement. Tighten that back up again. Equally important, make sure that it's up against the fence. In this drop saw you don't have a big long fence, you only have the short aluminium fence there and it's very easy to get the angle a little bit wrong. So make sure you're up against the fence and it's sitting nice and firmly. Of course you align your hands behind the yellow and black lines. When it comes to nailing on our architrave, we're going to use 40mm bullet head nails. Um, make sure that you angle the nail just in a little bit, just so it gets into the jam. Hold it to your intersecting lines, which are up the top here, and just tap it on. It'll want to move over the place a little bit. Just tack it on first, get a second nail in further down. Make sure you're on your three mil lines. And then we'll go ahead and we're going to measure the top one. Okay, to mark the head, I've cut a 45 on the end of this one. I'm going to sit the head up, making sure that this join is spot on. So I'll hold that in the right spot there. If the angle looks wrong, it means you've done something wrong at this stage. So hold that there, come this side, mark on your line, your three mil line. Sit it back there again, check that your mark is right. While you've got it up, mark 
the rough direction of the 45 so when you get it to the drop saw you know which way you're cutting it and um, when you do cut this one through the drop saw cut it a little bit longer and then slowly move it towards the line because once you overcut that line it's going to be too small it needs to be exactly on that line okay so you can see the line there where I need to cut right here so what I'm going to do is cut it a little bit longer So when I got right to that line, then I cut all the way through. So you can easy to move it up and down. Now that should fit right on. So I've cut the head to length, as you saw. Just sit it up there, check that it's lining up with the lines. Um, I've also cut the other side to length. I can sit that up there as well. If it all lines up, then we can nail it on. If not, trim a little bit more, or if you've trimmed it too small, you'll have to recut a, a new head. I'll fix that on and show you the finished product. Before you nail this up, you might find it a bit easier to fix if you pre-drill the holes for the nail, just a nice small two mil drill bit, and then it'll make nailing up a lot easier. Make sure when you are nailing it that you do hold it in the right position. even quirk around the door. Now when we're um, doing these mitres on site um, you'd put a little bit of wood glue in them as well. We'd also put a nail down through the top of the architrave. Now it will split, split the top of the architrave but it shouldn't split the side so get a short 30 mil, come in about 20 mil, hold the face of the architrave together cut that in and it holds it nice and flush and finishes it off nicely.